Hi there, it's Cheryl here. I'm coming in a bit early as usual because I had to do a lot of different moving around today and I want to make absolutely sure that things are working. So forgive me while I turn away from you. I'm just going to refresh the page to make sure the Facebook Live is working okay. That's always something that's bothersome. It appears to be, so that's wonderful. Um, perhaps somebody would let me know. I know we're coming in early, so sorry if I didn't say hello, hello. I'd just like to come in a minute or so early so that I know everything's working. Facebook have done some changes recently and I wasn't able to post the event as a, post the Facebook Live as an event as I usually do. And I'm not sure why that is. Um, I'm sure it's user error rather than anything else. But if anyone knows how I can post the event, from the computer in the usual way so that you get reminders. That would be wonderful. Okay, let's see. Okay, what's happening? Okay, we're nearly at seven, so won't be long. This is always so odd, it doesn't come up. It's coming up on the computer, so I know it is streaming, so that's great. It's just not coming up on the phone, but never mind. So. I will obviously try and say hello to you when you pop up, but forgive me if I can't, um, if I can't see your names coming up. I don't know how. I won't be able to do that, but anyway, hopefully. Ah, yes, now it's come up on the phone, so that's good. Oh, I feel better now for knowing that. So I might be able to see as you pop up. Anyway, we are now at seven o'clock, so welcome indeed to Knitting Matters. This is season two, episode 25. If somebody could just let me know that you can hear me okay. Um, forgive me while I look at my phone. I'm just checking to see if you can, if anyone's saying. I'm going to continue on as if you can hear me, and if you can't, just let me know. So thank you so much for taking the time to join me. As always, I really appreciate it. And whether you're watching live or the replay later, that's wonderful. And I'm delighted that you're here. Um, I'm Cheryl Lampard. I'm an image consultant. My company is Style Matters International. And one of the great two passions of my life have been sewing and knitting. And in particular, knitting is the thing that I do every day. I absolutely love it. I find it's my stress reliever. It's my therapy. And I know that's the case for many of you too. I used to also be the proud owner of a yarn store in Brighton, England called Yomo, uh, which means hair of the sheep. Um, and uh, one of the great joys of having a yarn store is that, that you get to be able to teach people how to knit. And I loved teaching people how to knit then, and I love it now. And I, I think I love it even more now because with the wonderful platforms of social media, you can, you can actually reach more people and teach them this wonderful fiber art. And it's so good to be back with you. Um, if you're a regular viewer, and thank you so much. If you are, I really do appreciate it. And if you're new, welcome indeed to you too. Um, so you might notice if you've watched before that I'm in a different setup again. Um, I've swapped my studio around again, and it's likely to actually change again in a couple of months time as my husband and I are actually moving house. Well, we're, we're actually moving states. In fact, we're moving from Florida to Pennsylvania, uh, which is very exciting. So there's likely to be a bit of disruption in the Knitter Matters schedule for our weekly Facebook Lives, as there was in the last couple of weeks. So please bear with me if I can't do every week over the next few weeks. Um, there's a lot to be done, isn't there, in this house moving lark, as many of you that have done it know. But my goodness, it's a while since I've done it. So it's... Um, yeah, there's so much to be done. Never mind. I will do what I can to stay on a schedule with, with knit matters, but forgive me if sometimes we miss a, a week here and there, but we will be back. Um, we haven't gone away. We will be back. It's just the move that's going to take up time and hopefully it won't eat into too much knit matters time. Anyway, Today it's all about V neck bands, and I mean the V shaped neck bands on knitted garments. I'm going to move the camera now. Um, I've practiced this a bit and I hope you'll get actually a better angle um, this time, but just bear with me while I move it because this is the bit that, you know, if it makes you queasy, look away now. I'll keep talking to you. Uh, I just have to reposition my chair and I have to reposition the camera. So, 
hopefully, and I can see where it's going to go, which is wonderful because of the camera that's set up. Whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I've moved that down too far. Okay. And the laptop suddenly lurched. Sorry, the iPad suddenly lurched. My goodness me. That was right. I think we should be okay. Once I get going and you can see where my hands are, or I can see where my hands are, I'll know better. But I'm really trying to get this more over my shoulder this time. So hopefully that will work. Okay. Right. Okay, I'm going to put the phone away because I'm not really seeing much coming up there. Okay, so V-necks, V-necks, V-necks. Now, one of the, of all the, the neck, blah, 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 of all the neck band shapes, V-necks are one of the most versatile. Um, and that's because they're easy to pull over the head. They, uh, so they negate the need for buttons on the shoulder. When you're talking about um, young children's garments, often you have to have buttons on the shoulder because their heads proportionately, especially young children are, are proportionately larger than the rest of them. They sort of, their heads are bigger to start with. So you nearly always have to have buttons on the shoulder, certainly for toddlers, um, uh, babies and toddlers you do. So if you've got a V-neck, you might not need that, certainly on an on a older child. Uh, V-necks are flattering for most face shapes, for sure, uh, because a V-neck gives more visual length for shorter necks. You know, you've got more length from the face to the, 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 the neck. Um, you get more, more visual length. I love V-necks because I don't have a particularly good jawline, in my opinion, and so having a V-neck, it draws attention away from that rather than to it. If any, I have anything too close to the neck, it, it's, it's too much of a visual focal point for me. They work, V-necks work both for women and men's garments, and of course you see a lot of men's sweaters with a V-neck. And they're great for layering. They're so, it's so easy to wear something else underneath without too much going on right at the neck. So you could have a collared shirt, you could have you know, a blouse or a pretty neckline. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a sleeve on it, but you've got something underneath to add interest um, and to add warmth if you need it. So, but, but, so V-necks are just one of the, the, the best neckline shapes, but knitters often shy away from working V-neck bands because the shaping can look a bit more complicated, but it's really not. Now, I'm going to come back to these. Sweater vests are really big for fall and winter this year. I do love a really good sweater vest. And the shaping can look... Um, so, sorry. Sweater vests, the, the, it's a big trend for, for fall and winter this year. So it's the perfect time to start practicing your V-neck knitting. Now, this is a a working progress that I've shown you before. I've, I've just got to the point where I've shaped all the neck, I've done the back, I've, I've got to do the um, the armholes. This was adapted from an old pattern, uh, 30 years old magazine pattern. Um, I kept the leaf design, I might, you know, I dismissed the sleeves and I lowered the V. And I want a really deep V for my sweat events. I want the V to be the focal point, so I want to do a really wide band. Now I can see that you might think this looks more like a U shape, and that's because rather than go to a, a sort of V point here, I cast off, I bound off some stitches here because I want a really deep welt, if you like. I want a really deep, uh, wide piece of ribbon. I want that to be a focal point. Now, what I'm going to do with this one, obviously this isn't the right colour and it's not the right thickness of yarn, but I'm going to do some kind of crossed, cross banded v-neck. I'm not going to actually do a mitered corner, which we're going to talk about in a minute. I'm going to do something like this. So you can see why I've got that, I did this bit here, why I did this bind off. So it gives me room then to get that in without it making the neckline itself too small. So that's the idea that I'm going for there. Obviously, it's going to be in this yarn and it's going to be much finer ribbing. But looking at that ribbing, I might even pick up this two-stitch mock cable here. I don't know if you can see that. 
it's a, a two stitch mock cable you, instead of actually don't actually have to uh, use a cable needle to do this but it gives a bit more interest so I could actually do something like that maybe not for every part of the rib but for every other rib part something like that and I keep talking about the ribbing because ribbing is a usual choice for neck burns v-shaped or otherwise as you do need some elasticity now you do have a bit of leeway with v-shaped neck bands because that, as I said before they're easier to get over the head than high around necks um, but you still need to have some spring you know you need to have a bit of spring in your neck band you you don't want it so um, loose or so over designed that it's going to be more like a frill well if you want a frill that's a whole other thing but on my sweater vest i want a deep welt and i'm probably going to do some combination of ribbing and that that two stitch mock cable so but i need it to have a little bit of spring so that it stays nice and flat and that it, it springs back to shape because i don't want it to be stretched okay so now let's talk about the neck bands themselves typically the v neck bands have a central point with their shaping don't worry about these little labels i've put them on because i it's just to remind myself which i did so many different options today i wanted to remind myself of which ones they were and also because they're very similar and also afterwards if i don't put the labels on or since i've done them they go into my box of samples and then i can't remember which was which and i have to kind of work it out from the stitch which i can do but it's easier to label them so the all these neck bands or all these um yeah all these neck bands have a mitered corner really they have a central point with shaping so effectively you've got a mite a mitered corner you know that's what a mitered corner is and we did do corners for edgings a while back so effectively that's what we have in all of these it's a mitered corner but you're doing it slightly differently you're doing it with that being your center point of a garment neckband now it, it they may not or may have a center stitch at the v point well what do i mean by a center stitch so depending on your pattern the shaping may have a center stitch at the v where you would start it it may have a center stitch here or it may not and it doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't necessarily equate to how many stitches you've picked up whether they're an odd number or an even number around the neck because the pattern may actually say pick up an extra stitch to make that center stitch or decrease a stitch to either make or not have that center stitch it's actually more about how the designer or you want your center v decrease to look okay and also depending on how acute the v shape is the de decreases the decreases are probably going to be every round okay if you've got a wider more open v and some sweaters do have that slightly more casual sweaters they're wider they're a bit sort of not sloppy but they're, they're a bit more open you might not want such an acute angle so you might do the decreasings every other row your pattern will guide you you kind of only need to worry about changing that if you're changing the pattern um, or you're, it, it's a very different um, neckline from the one that you want so you, you would have to play about with that now notice that I've said rounds V neck bands are generally worked on circular needles or DPNs um, in my little samples here I've done a little sweater piece here I'm just going to move this around a bit and you would normally see see nothing happens by accident I carefully work this out I'm like quite pleased with my quite proud of my little mini half sweater here anyway I've said rounds because ne V neck bands are usually worked on circular needles other neck bands are too um, but certainly um, for a v-neck they they tend to be worked on circulars or DPNs after both shoulder seams have been sewn. Clearly here, I don't have a shoulder seam because I've only got the front of the sweater, just to sort of demonstrate. And clearly this, I've done a deeper 
neckband here than I would for a sweater of this size, which is really a sort of doll sized sweater. So if I'm going to do, if I, I've just done it deeper so I can show you the stitch patterns. But that's, you know, you again, you can play about with how deep you want on your neckband if it doesn't say or you want it differently. But obviously, if on a small sweater, you'd probably want a smaller neckband because this is too big for this. The proportion is wrong. You'd want half that size. And that would be just fine. You know, half that size would be just fine. OK, but I digress anyway. So you would work. You would do your shoulder seams and then you would pick up round the neckband as the pattern states. And I've got some different samples here. I'll, I'll just pop them on here so I think you can see them sort of better like that. I'm not going to show you how to do every one because some of them are so, so simple. So this ivory one, for example, I hope you can see that. Yes, I'm going to leave that on the board. Otherwise, you won't be able to see. Oh, you can see it. OK, I can see from the computer. So the, the stitches are picked up with a circular needle on this one. Um, and the next three I'm going to show you, they're all done on a circular needle. It's certainly possible to work a V neckband on straight needles. And I will demonstrate a version of that in a moment. So this one picked up on circular needles and it has a center stitch. What you would do was put once you've picked up your stitches and you're going to pick up from the right side, you would put a stitch marker either one of these these sort of little light bulb shaped ones or similar that you actually can pin to the stitch or you could use one of these these are quite good for marking a center stitch because it's not gonna you know exactly where your center stitch is then if you've got one of these you might think oh okay well or it's fallen off the needle and now you've lost your center stitch so you know, until you get the pattern going, I would sort of use one of these, the ones that clip on or pin on. OK, anyway, back to that in a minute. So this one has a center stitch and the stitch pattern on this one is so simple. So you're, you're, you're going to start off with your knit one, purl one ribbing and you're going to stop two stitches before the marked center stitch. So if, if your marker was here, you're going to stop two stitches away from that. Then you're going to do an SSK. You're going to knit the center stitch. Then you're going to knit two together. And then you would continue ribbing. And then you would do exactly the same thing on the next round. So you're decreasing two stitches on every round. Now, if you've just joined and you're not sure what an SSK is, I am going to show you those stitches. I'm just going to show you in the and with flat knitting so that you know. So for this particular type of center stitch mitered corner, you would knit up to where two stitches before your marked stitch. OK, let's assume that my my marked stitch is there. So with this one, I'm going to do an SSK where you slip, slip and knit through the back. Then I would knit my center stitch and then I would knit two together. OK. And then I would continue ribbing. You're knitting in the round. So you're not reversing it, but you can see on the back you've got three pearls together. You've got three pearls together and that's absolutely fine. That's what you should have at that point. So what we've done here just did my SSK knit the center stitch and then you knit two together. So you've done a left leaning decrease. Then you've done uh, uh, your knit stitch. Then you've done a right leaning, leaning decrease. So as you continue to do that, you would see that form and what you've got you can see quite clearly just this simple knit stitch in the middle okay so that's that one this one this sample is very similar it's a very similar um stitch we've but what this had no center stitch to start with now remember i said this is really about how you like the look of the neckband or how the designer has chosen for it to be OK. 
and you can change these about you can decide which you like best or if you don't like any of these um, but this is exactly the same so for this one you you don't have a center stitch you still need to place your marker at the center point of the V you need to know remember you would have picked up stitches so you need to know where that center V stitch is and you'd put a stitch marker on that center stitch again you'd work to two stitches before the marked stitch you would do your SSK your left leaning decrease then you would go straight into the knit two together so it's slip slip knit through the back loops then you would do your knit two together so this one is exactly the same stitch the only difference is that you don't have a center stitch center knit stitch going up the middle and i'm sorry that this looks a bit thick here wouldn't you know it there was a big clump of kind of untwisted yarn in my yarn that i was using there but i was so near finishing i figured i could just get away with it as it was a sample obviously if that was a garment i would have to you know break the yarn and start again but it's a bit lumpy there because of that not because of the stitch it's just a fourth in the yarn there unfortunately okay so that's those two now this one is this also has a center stitch i'm going to put it on our little mini sweater again so you can sort of see so my center stitch i would have picked up round here i would have put a marker in my center stitch this has a center stitch this one is super simple too you're going to work to one stitch before the center stitch you're going to slip the next stitch and the center stitch knitwise at the same time then you will knit one and pass both slip stitch over the knit stitch i'll show you how to do that because i know that sounds confusing let's just put in a marker here let's say this is my center stitch okay for this sorry just come off the edge of the so I, all i've done here is put a little marker here this is going to be my pretend center stitch on this one so i'm going to for this one i'm going to work up one stitch before the center stitch so there is my one stitch before the center stitch now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to knit slip the next stitch that's a purl stitch doesn't matter at all and i'm going to knit this one oh, sorry i'm going to slip them both knit wise together so i'm not doing them separately as i would for a slip slip I'm doing them both together it if you're going to say to me they're the same thing if you're not they're not because what happens is it positions the stitch on the needle in a different way so trust me on that it really does so it might look the same and it's not because we're not knitting into the back of the loops but we're not slipping these separately we're slipping them together then we are knitting one and then I'm going to pass my two stitches over okay then I continue to knit my rib and then I would continue doing that each round again on the back you're going to see three pearls in one row that's exactly what you should see so if you were doing this on a straight needle that is what you would see and that's what you would then sort of pearl into the back when you came through the other way okay so that's that one that's this gray one so you can see it's quite a defined um sort of almost like a big a rib i quite like this one i think if you're going to have um part of the niceness of a v-neck sweater is is how this v is formed and i really like to see a quite a bold stitch pattern and i of all of them yeah i mean it's hard to say which I like best. I do like this one and I really do like this one. I like the sort of strength of this boldness of this rib and maybe that's nice for a man's sweater. Um, again, you choose your, your choice. So the last one I want to show you is the one that we are knitting flat. So by that I mean we're knitting with a straight needles. We're not knitting this in the round. Now 
clearly um, you could not join both your shoulder seams if you were going to knit flat but what you would do would be to um, you would join one shoulder seam so that you could lay the garment sort of flat and then you would work from the back neck down the front down this side of the front that side of the front and you would have a seam at this shoulder you would have a seam at the shoulder and you'd seam into the neck band as well it's worth knowing how to do um, a neck band without on a flat on a straight needle just in case you don't have a circular to hand or it you know it's isn't or the pattern says otherwise and of course if you've got a circular needle you can use it as a straight needle you just can't use a straight needle as a circular one unless it's dpn of course so that that's the idea behind this one but let me show you how to do this again these are just a few options this is not the only option for straight needles but i'm trying to show you what i think are perhaps the easiest ones and the the simplest ones to do so for this one again you've got to imagine that you have picked up your stitches around the neck band here and next week we will or next episode i should say we will do actually picking up stitches around various shapes neck bands including this one we'll do it around other shapes as well because um we haven't done it around neck bands before we've picked up stitches for other things but not around neck bands so next episode will be all about picking up those stitches so for the this sample so we've picked up the stitches and now we've turned our needle remember because we're on a flat needle a straight needle we're flat knitting on a straight needle i should say not flat knitting um yes it's flat knitting on a straight needle it's not a flat needle it's a straight needle <laughs> Okay, so now I have, I've picked up, I've picked up on the right side, now I've turned this over and this, imagine this, so this is where I'm sort of picking up, okay, although I've picked up, this is where I'm going to knit, so I'm on the wrong side is what I'm trying to say in a very wordy way, I'm on the wrong side. What I have done is marked the center point. This one is a little trickier, it's a little trickier to start off with. What you have to remember on this one, you do need an equal number of stitches each side of the neck. So your center point is marked actually in the row below. That's a bit hard to see because this is my cast on row, obviously, but yours will be your wrong side row of your picked up stitches. So you can mark that in the row below. And what you're doing is you're not marking one stitch you're kind of marking the two middle stitches that will become apparent in a minute okay so i'm going to work my knit one pull one rib if i can get my needle in the yarn knit one pull one knit one pull one sorry i had to do a few stitches so i could get a bit of a run up so you can see how the decreases work so i'm going to get one one stitch before my marker no so it's essentially if i had a stitch below that i'm going to pick up a stitch either side of the marker okay that's what i'm trying to say so and this is the only time you do this particular um stitch so now I would knit those two stitches together, or rather I pull those together because I'm on the wrong side. So essentially my marker is on the stitch below and I'm going to pull the stitches either side of that marker together. Okay, now what I'm going to do before I forget or before it doesn't happen, I'm going to move that marker. And for this, you do need one of these clip or pin markers okay so I'm going to actually put that in the stitch now now that I have a stitch I'm going to actually put that in the stitch that's where my I pulled those two together so I'm just going to get to the end of my row here and I would continue knit one pull one rib 
Okay. Right, turn around now to the right side. This is where I'm on my right side. So if I was knitting this on my sweater, this would be here now. You know, it's going to be like that because I will have stretched that out to have picked up my stitches. But this is where this would be now, right in the middle there. Okay. So this is the row that's a little trickier. I knit... I, pull, I start with a pearl. You're going to pearl the pearls and knit the knits. You're going to knit the stitches how they present themselves. So knit the knits, pearl the pearls. That's always what you do with ribbing. One stitch before that marker. And then I'm going to do something a little bit different. So check where my marker is. And I, of course, because I've pinned it onto the stitch, I can sort of move it around. So one stitch before that marker. All right. I'm just going to move the yarn back so it's out of the way. Now I need to take this stitch off. I'm going to take that one off the needle. I'm just going to let it hang. It's not going anywhere because it's got that marker pinned to it. I'm going to put that stitch back on the left hand needle. Then I'm going to move this one back here. I'll do it again in a second. And then I'm going to knit these three stitches through the back of the loops. One, two, three. Oh. oh, of course I've got that. Hang on, let's get that out of the way. Right, that was wanted to go on my needle as well. So those three I knit through the back of the loops. Okay. I'll show you, I do, I won't take time and do in a row and then back again. If I wasn't tangling myself up. In my knitting so I'm going to just take this out and put this somewhere else and we're going to pretend that we're doing this again okay so let us pretend that this is where my center point stitch is okay remember on the previous row that was a two stitches purled together I moved the stitch mark to put it actually on the stitch. Now what I have done is knitted up to one stitch before the, the marked stitch. I take this stitch off. I take this one off and let it dangle. It's not going anywhere. It's held by that marker. That's why you need to pin that through. I put the first slip stitched slit <laughs> stitch back on the left hand needle. Pull up this stitch on my stitch marker, put it back on that needle. So it's I've crossed it over in front of the stitch that was previously before this one. And then I knit through three stitches through the back loops. You have to wiggle to get you up. There you go. And you can see that I've actually just split the yarn a bit there, but you see the point. And that is what forms that nice bold rib there. And what you're doing there is, as with all the other techniques, you're actually decreasing two stitches on each of the right side rows. On the reverse side, on the wrong side, you would just knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and you would knit the stitch or purl it as it presents itself. It will be a purl stitch. You're going to be purling that stitch. That's how it will present itself. So on this, because you're knitting um, in the flat, on the reverse row, on the wrong side row, you're not doing any other decreases in this particular pattern. You're just knitting or purling the stitches and it will be a purl stitch as it presents itself on the wrong side row. But I know you can't see it yet, but you can just see how that has started to form. This is the first one that I did here. You can see that starting to form. And if I flip that over, you can see there there's three 
pearl stitches in a row. You won't always see that because as you're pulling in the ribs, sometimes you're going to be having a knit stitch. Sometimes it's a pearl stitch. doesn't matter. But you're, that's what you see, certainly to start off with. And you can see down here, it's three pearl stitches. So that one does, that, that, that sounds a bit odd, but it's, it's really quite simple once you get the hang of it. And you're decreasing two stitches on your right side row. If you're working in the round, you're decreasing two stitches on every row because, of course, you're not doing a wrong side row. You're just going in the round. But on this one, this particular design, you're just doing the decrease on the right side row. And you just knit back as normal rib as the stitches present themselves on the wrong side row. So I hope that gave you some ideas and perhaps took out the fear of V neckbands. I've shown you a few today, but there are all sorts of versions. And remember that you have the options when it comes to doing the shaping. I'm going to move the camera back now to sort of say goodbye to you. I don't like saying goodbye to you while the camera's not looking at me. This is going to be a bit of a interesting because I haven't make sure it doesn't flop forward again like it did just now what are we seeing what are you seeing there oh a little I need to scoot back a bit and then you might be able to see me if you choose to <laughs> I'm a bit wobbly but anyway I'm going to go to bear with me for another minute or so oh hopefully you'd see me I think you can okay so I do hope that gave you some good ideas and remember as I've just said, there's lots of other options, but I wanted to take the fear out of doing that V-neck shaving. It's really not tricky. If you can, I'd always do it in the round. It is easier. I find it easier. And you don't have to worry about then getting a seam on the neckband anywhere. Um, but you can do it with straight needles, as I've just shown. And there's no reason why you couldn't actually apply that last one, the way we did that last one, to knitting in the round except you might have to do it every other row because you're going to get quite a thick rib with that thick series of ribs. So you would have to probably do that every other row. But again, you would swatch that. Um, what I would say is follow what your pattern says. If you don't like how they have done the, the mitered edge or the center stitch or that mitered corner at the V point, Look at other ways to do it and do a swatch first. But just because the pattern's done like that doesn't mean to say you have to do it like that. There are all sorts of lovely options. But you do need something to have a bit of spring to it. I wouldn't recommend doing a... Um, you, there are... Uh, yeah, you can do some stockinette stitch welts, but you have to sort of do some decreasing to keep the shape nice. Uh, but I wouldn't do anything like a seed stitch where it's a really sturdy and flat stitch because you're just not going to get the spring that you want. Um, anyway, you have options and I hope you enjoyed that. So as always, this episode and all the others can be are uh, uploaded to the Knitter Matters Facebook page afterwards. They're also on our Knitter Matters YouTube channel um, for you to see um, all of them. So the, 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 the whole playlist is there. And that's, that might be the easier way to see them if you want to remind yourself of the techniques. Um, if you're searching for this one, it's season two, episode 25, and it's V-neck bands. So thank you so much again for watching. Um, and I'll see you next time where we'll be talking about picking up neck bands on V-necks, square necks, and indeed circular round necks. So if, if you'd like to join in for that one, I look forward to seeing you next episode. Until then, stay well, stay safe and stay knitting. Bye for now.